we start with a relying party, a website. We also have an identity provider, a place where all the identities are stored. And we have, of course, the subject who is using a computer. And that computer has a web browser. Let's imagine the web browser is Internet Explorer, but in fact it could be any web browser that has support for information card identity selectors. A request is sent to the relying party, uh, an HTML um, page, and a login button is clicked. Now hidden behind the login button is an object tag. And the object tag will contain uh, information such as the address of the identity provider, the um, format of the security token it requires, uh, in this case SAML 1.1, and um, a list of required and optional claims. Let's just have required claims in this case, first name, last name, and email. The whole object tag is packaged up and obviously downloaded in the HTML page and um, we can say that this object tag really forms a policy statement. It's the policy of the RP in order to give services of some description to the user. Internet Explorer uh, sees this object tag and it has um, an, a helper object which recognizes the object tag and says, aha, whenever I see this object tag I have to fire up the Windows Cardspace client software. Remember, Windows Cardspace is Microsoft's implementation of an identity selector. It's available for Windows XP Service Pack 2 if you download the .NET Framework 3.0 or higher and it's built into Windows Vista. just want to clear some space off the screen here so we can see a little more what's going on. So card space fires up and in it will be probably a number of information cards but this one in particular which was issued by the IP in this diagram. Remember there's a one-to-one -one relationship between cards and IPs. That card can only be issued by a single IP. When the card is clicked a request is made to get a policy statement from the IP and this policy statement may say for example that it wants another security token or it may have authentication requirements in it and the policy statement is downloaded to the client and then um, a message called a request security token or an RST which is part of WS Trust is created and in that message, an XML message, we will have the um, the format of the security token that's required so in this case let's just say it's a SAML 1.1 token we'll also have the required claims so if you remember from the RP they were first name last name and email Now, because
because this information is potentially sensitive, we need to authenticate the user. Even though they're the holder of the card, we still need to authenticate them. And so, in this case, we embed some authentication information, such as username and password, or maybe X509 certificate authentication, maybe a smart card logon, maybe a Kerberos, or maybe even using a personal card. You remember we talked about a personal card. We well, could have registered a personal card with the site in the first instance. So that's one, two, three, four, five means of authenticating the user to the identity provider. Now let's redraw this diagram to um, to create some more space to see what happens next.